Okay, so let's look at how you can use MATLAB or Octave to perform the partial fraction decomposition. Because in every problem, pretty much, when you have a z-domain problem and you are going back to the uh, time domain, you will have to perform the partial fraction decomposition. Now, I will not ask you to do that every time and show your work. Now, once you know how to do it, that's good. Uh, if tools are not available, you can do it with your hand easily. Of course, in industry, uh, we use tools. In education, we use tools. There's a technology, engineering technology program. Uh, and without using tools, it's just going to become very inefficient um, to perform this type of stuff, if you, especially if you have lengthy problems. So we are going to be using uh, and actually many calculators can also perform partial fraction decomposition and you're free to use whatever you want. I'm just gonna show you how to do it using um, MATLAB or Octave. So the um, function that you have to perform partial fraction decomposition is the residue function. RPK, residue, ND. RPK and ND are just variable, you can use any variable. But the residue function is the main function to perform partial fraction decomposition. So let me open uh, Octave and then show you, let's say example 5 point. Let's do each example real quick. Example 5 point, starting 5.3. So when you have example like this, uh, 10 over z minus 0 0.5, z minus 0 0.8. And if I open my Octave right here, come on. The first thing that you're gonna do is you need to have polynomial uh, for both numerator and denominator, right? Both numerator and denominator should be written in terms of polynomial, not in terms of roots. So if you do have roots, there's a great function in uh, MATLAB, which is called poly. What poly does is it creates polynomial from roots, if you know roots. So instead of multiplying it, and writing the polynomial with your hand, spending time. I will advise you if you do have roots, just use a, the poly function and it's gonna create the polynomial. So let's say this is my denominator. I'm gonna put D poly and look at the roots of the denominator. So I have two factors, Z minus 0 0.5 and Z minus 0 0.8. The root of the first is 0 0.5. The root of the second factor is 0.8. So as a vector, I'm gonna write down 0 0.5 first root and 0 0.8 second root. End vector and this. So observe it created another vector, and this vector is basically what roots of uh, the root the coefficient of the polynomial. So basically, your coefficient is what your coefficient is z square z is square let me go back and check what was that negative 1.3 plus 0 0.4 so you have z is square minus 1.3 z plus 0 0.4 that is your polynomial so when you multiply z minus 0 0.5 and z minus 0 0.8, actually I can see it, z is square, and then you add these two together, which will be 1.3 negative sign, and then 0 0.5 times 0 0.8, which will be 40, so 0 0.4. So that is going to be your polynomial. Now again, this is easy, but if you have you know, four or five factors, you have power five, z to the power five, it's just gonna take you time to do it uh, manually. Just use the poly function in MATLAB, and that's gonna make your life easy. Okay, so this is the polynomial of the denominator, uh, coefficient of the polynomial of the denominator, and in the numerator we have only 10. So you have R P K equals residue, and numerator we have 10, 10, and denominator I just stored all the components in D, so I'm just going to put D over here. And it's going to show me r and p what is r r is basically your numerators 33 33.33 and negative uh, 33.33 let me go down so 
negative 33.33 which is your a right here and 33.33 which is your b and p is the corresponding root of the denominator factor so the first one 33.33 has the denominator root 0 0.8 right which it is b over z minus 0 0.8 so this is the root this is not the factor so when you make when you're making the factor you will make you will subtract this root from z so b which is 33.33 will have the corresponding root 0 0.8 so the factor is going to be 33.33 over z minus 0 0.8 and negative 33.33 has the corresponding root in the denominator 0 0.5 so negative 33.33 divided by z minus 0 0.5 which is the first factor so that's how you're making partial fraction from the residue function k observe k is empty matrix what is k basically right now and mostly i think 99 percent of the time um, our fraction is proper fraction that is the power of z in the numerator is less than the power of z in the denominator when you have proper fraction you don't have to divide the numerator by denominator and make the fraction so if you have improper fraction that is the power of z in the numerator is either equal or more than the denominator the first thing that you do before you make partial fraction is you divide the numerator by the denominator you will have some polynomial at the end and a proper fraction so if you have improper fraction the polynomial that you are going to get as a uh, as a residual uh, that polynomial the coefficient of that polynomial is are going to be k and then the the proper fraction that you get the uh, numerator will be the coefficient of the proper fraction uh, and the denominator of the roots of the proper fraction so k if you have proper fraction k will always be zero because you're not dividing the numerator by denominator but if you have improper fraction give you an example let's say you have uh, 10 10 z square plus 5 z plus 3 divided by z square plus 6 z plus 12 this is an improper fraction because the power of z in the numerator is same as power of z in the denominator so if it is same or greater it's an improper fraction so first thing you do is you basically divide the numerator which is 10 z square plus 5 z plus 3 by the denominator z square plus 6z plus 12 so you do that first right so you're gonna get z times 10 10z square so you're gonna get 10z square plus 10 times 660z plus 10 times 1220 and then you subtract it this will be cancelled out you're gonna get negative so you're gonna get negative 55 z and uh, 3 minus 120 is going to be negative 117 okay so now the power of z became less that is a single power as compared to the numerator so your this thing can be written as 10 minus 55 z minus 117 over z square plus 6z plus 12 so if you have something like this basically k is going to be this 10 that's going to be k and then r and p again it's going to give you um, uh, you're going to you're going to create the partial fraction of this a over you know 
one power and v over the other power. So uh, the partial fraction of this is going to be in r and p. But k will hold this value 10. So that's what k is. So if your proper, if your fraction is proper fraction, which most of our fractions are going to be, I would say 99.99% uh, are going to be proper fraction, <coughs> then k will always be 0. All right. Let's go to ex the next example. When you have uh, complex conjugate roots, and let's do that. So I have y z over z is right here. 2z plus 6. So if I do, let me clear this up. Clear. CLC. So I have R, P, K residue uh, numerator. So 2z plus 6. So 2 and uh, 6. And denominator which is z cube, so 1, 1.4z 1. squared, 1.4, 0 0.74z, 0 0.74, and uh, 0 0.136, 0 0.136. Now remember, uh, like I explained in the uh, poly function and root function, uh, oh sorry, poly function, if you don't have um, any power of z present, you still have to enter 0 for that in the poly function. Likewise, in the residue function, if you don't have any uh, coefficient for any power of 0, let's say in the denominator, if you would have z cubed plus 1.4z squared plus 0 0.136, so there is no z, you still have to enter 0 for that. So in that case, you're going to enter 1, 1.4, 0, 0 0.136. So make sure, do not forget about that. All right, so this residue. All right, observe, we got this. So if I go down for my A, A is 52. So which is the last one, as you can see, 52 with the corresponding root of negative 0 0.4, right? Because the factor was Z plus 0 0.4 right here, Z plus 0 0.4. So the root is negative 0 0.4. All right, now the two co um, complex conjugate roots, negative 26, plus j 5.33 numerator denominator is root of the denominator is negative 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.3 so the root of this negative 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.3 remember this is the factor which is you are making from the root by subtracting the root so if you calculate root of this that's going to be negative 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.3 which is this with the numerator to be negative 26 minus j, uh, sorry, negative 26 plus j 5.33. So b is negative 26 plus j 5.33. And the other one is the complex conjugate with the numerator to be negative 26 minus j 5.33 and root negative 0.5 minus 0.3. Now, um, as we discussed earlier, you will have to calculate the um, uh, uh, rectangular form uh, you have to convert the rectangular form into polar form one easy way to do that if you already have rpk just use the absolute uh, function absolute of r is going to show you the magnitude of each value so basically the magnitude that you're looking for is the for the first one which is 26.541 and likewise you can calculate the phase using angle function angle of r and angle function gives you phase in radians so multiply by 180 divided by pi is going to convert into degrees so the phase of the first one is 168.41 it is showing you exponent because the last one phase is zero where it is just doing extreme calculation and showing the phase to be power exponent negative 15 so it's almost zero basically it's as close to zero as possible but since it is showing exponent negative 15 it is showing rest of them in the exponent form as well but this is 168.41 the phase of the first one uh, r sorry and the phase of the second one is negative 168 we just need the first one and likewise you can do the same for p calculate the absolute value to calculate the magnitude calculate the angle function calculate the phase 
because those two things you need right over here right right here and then using this and using the relationship number 15 you will write down the inverse C transform all right the last one where you have the repeated roots so in in MATLAB the first thing if you want to do that check out the help of residue function help and in, in uh, MATLAB the help is really good uh, in octave I don't like the help of octave but in any case you can check online actually residue uh, Mat MATLAB help residue and it will uh, you will see it so observe if you have repeated roots right over here if you have repeated root how it is arranged it is arranged the same way as we arranged it that is starting from the lowest power of the repeated root to the highest power of the repeated root right it goes from the lowest power of the repeated root to the highest power of the repeated root and that's how we arranged it uh, right over let's say where it is example 5.5 this is what we have found. okay right here right here sorry so we have lowest power first and then the highest power in this case highest power is only two but if you have three or four then you start from the lowest power then the second um, lowest then the third one and of course the highest power is going to come at the end so exactly the same way uh, octave and matlab arrange the polynomial so if i go ahead and do that uh, let me clear this up clc and let's write down r p k residue and let's see what do we have uh, we have y z over z z over z minus 0 0.7 z minus 0 0.4 square so in the numerator i have only z that is z to the power one i don't have any coefficient for z to the power zero i must go to the lowest power of z so the coefficient that I'm going to enter is 1 for z to the power 1 and 0 for z to the power 0. That is constant. And in the numerator, in the denominator, since I do not have a polynomial written, right? Uh, did I have polynomial? Uh, no, I don't. So I don't have polynomial written. No worries. I'm just going to use my poly function and create the polynomial. So I'm going to use poly and then I'm going to enter the roots of the polynomial one of my root is 0 0.7 0 0.7 and then I have two roots of 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 so that will create oh, why I put 0 0.6 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 so this will create the uh, the polynomial coefficient of the polynomial without uh, you know me manually going and then multiplying them together and creating a polynomial uh, so poly is going to just do that for me and i think i'm missing one ending parentheses for the residue function so i'm going to put that and here you go so observe that i have two uh, roots with the similar uh, uh, two factors with the similar roots 0 0.4 0 0.4 and this is for the first 0.4 is for the first power that is b over z minus 0 0.4 the root of that is going to be 0 0.4 and the second 0 0.4 is for c that is when you have the factor the second uh, factor with the um, square power and of course my first one is 0 0.7 so look for the corresponding numerator 7.778 when the root is 0 0.7 so a is 7.778 with the factor of uh, negative 0 0.7 z minus 0 0.7 all right my uh, c with the highest power first we evaluated c which is negative 1.33 negative 1.33 right here with z minus 0 0.4 square and my b is in the middle one my b is here negative 7.778 negative 7.778 with z minus 0 0.4 and of course k is empty matrix so if you have repeated roots matlab 